The rationale for exploration was God, gold, and glory, especially the gold part. Word got around that Columbus sailed west and survived. The rest of Western Europe did not want to be left out, sending various underfunded explorers to find their own gold and silver. Enough survived, bringing back goodies and stories for more voyages. After the Spanish and Portuguese, new arrivals came from England, Holland, and France. They explored the New World well north of Mesoamerica, which were full of indigenous people, suggesting opportunities for trade more than colonies. Spanish conquistadors marched north across the Rio Grande. The most famous were Coronado in the southwest, De Soto in Florida, and into the south, and Cabeza de Vaca, surviving a sinking boat in Galveston in 1528. De Vaca survived years of slavery, walked west from tribe to tribe into Mexico, then sailed for Spain in 1537 with stories to tell. Coronado started in 1540 with almost 300 conquistadors and a thousand in indigenous allies, discovering the Pueblo Indians, farmers with sophisticated terraced homes and farms. Spaniards would establish settlements and missions from Texas to California. Much of the success of the missions was forced resettlement of Indians to Spanish settlements for instruction. The Alamo became the most famous mission. Fernando de Soto landed around Tampa Bay in 1539 and led an expedition through Florida into Georgia and beyond. He regularly fought with the Indians and executed 200. He captured the first massacre in the U.S. Others he used as slaves. De Soto killed more in various battles, but ultimately he had to retreat to his boats in the Gulf of Mexico. He died near the Mississippi River in 1542, and the troops returned to Mexico. He left destruction, horses, pigs, and disease, which would decimate the indigenous population. The 16th century was Tudor England, including the infamous Henry VIII and Elizabeth I. Henry created Anglicanism to dump wife number one. Catholic clerics and monks could convert or die. He fathered a soon-to-be motherless daughter, that was Elizabeth. Producing a son proved difficult, which of course meant blaming and then dumping the wives. The daughter, Elizabeth, eventually became queen and ruled into the next century. Charismatic, calculating, and known for England's victory over the Spanish Armada. Italian John Cabot sailed for England to the New World in 1497, financed by Henry VII, father to number eight. Cabot probably landed in Newfoundland or nearby, giving England a claim to New World land. The most famous of the British explorers were Francis Drake and Walter Raleigh, more or less pirates given patents as privateers to attack Spanish ships, which they were good at. Drake circumnavigated the world after a fair bit of plunder in the late 1570s in his famous galleon, the Golden Hind. Both Drake and Raleigh served as vice admirals fighting the Spanish Armada. Raleigh established a colony at Roanoke Island in 1585, calling the land Virginia. 
a ship with more colonists landed in 1586, but a later ship found the island deserted, the lost colony, and another history mystery. This would not deter later English colonists. Legend has it that Raleigh brought tobacco to England, but it's likely that the British had been puffing away before Raleigh. Raleigh did bring potatoes to Ireland. Francis Drake probably brought potatoes back to England. Legend has it, Queen Elizabeth served potatoes at a banquet, but the guests got sick when the cooks threw out the tubers and cooked the stems instead. The fate of the cooks is unknown, but the lowly potatoes were fed to the pigs in England and sent to the Irish. Instead of a royal pension from James I, Raleigh was beheaded at the standard retirement age of 65. Drake died of dysentery in the tropics. Holland was only a single province of what became the small country of the Netherlands. Spain controlled the Netherlands in the late Middle Ages and sent in the Inquisition. The provinces revolted in 1568, which started the Eighty Years' War. Holland was a major trading center, creating the beginnings of a modern state with innovative capital markets, property rights, and rule of law. What better time to explore a new world than during a war with a large European empire? The probable reason for explanation was their trading prowess. They used the innovative idea of joint stock companies to fund exploration and colonization rather than government. Rich folk actually paid for the right to explore. France expanded during the 16th century to roughly the size of the modern country with battle escapades beyond France generally unsuccessful. Paris was the capital and perhaps the largest city in Europe with about 400,000 people. Francis I was the most famous king, although not overly successful in battle. The Reformation brought the wars of religion as French Huguenots hoped for protection from Catholic France. They were temporarily tolerated under the Edict of Nantes in 1598. The French wanted colonial trading outpost and to create a new France with the opportunity to find the Northwest Passage as a trade route to Asia. Duplicating the Spanish finds of gold and silver was equally appealing. Like the Dutch, French explorers were latecomers, beginning with Samuel de Champlain. Champlain started in the Caribbean, then up the coast of New England, and founded Quebec in 1608 as part of New France. Intrepid French adventurers had success in trading furs from the Indians for their goods like metal tools and guns. The Western European countries attempted colonies in the 16th century. This became somewhat easier as smallpox decimated the indigenous tribes. England attempted the unsuccessful Roanoke colony. The French established a colony in what became South Carolina with the usual difficulty the Spanish destroyed the colony. The Spanish mostly failed, but St. Augustine was founded in 1565, becoming the oldest continuously occupied European settlement in the United States. We are most interested in the eventual English colonists that more or less created the United States, the good, bad, and exceptional. The idea of New World trading post and colonization was royally appealing, but no funds were available. Fortunately, the joint stock company, borrowed from the Dutch, was the solution. The rich folk of Britain financed these ventures, 
taking all the risks, while the economy and crown would share in the rewards and glory. This would help spark the capitalist system over the next few hundred years, basically a system created out of royal weakness. Many of the colonies would be founded by joint stock companies in the following century, all required royal charters. English middle and lower classes with various complaints wanted a new start in the new world and willing to take their chances with survival, which were not great. We'll concentrate on the first, Jamestown, on the next video of food history and mystery.